Chapter Two of Fernie's World, wherein we meet Florence. Fernie, Fernie, the girls chanted around her. She was now eight years old, old enough that she was disinterested with the dolls that had been discarded to younger sisters years before unused. Old enough that she must attend proper tea with her mother old enough that she was to make sure not to get mud on her petticoats or to go out into the rain or in all manner of ghastly weather, as Mama admonished. But what was ghastly weather when she could study her ferns year-round? Ferny, Ferny, the girls continued and began to circle around her. She gritted her teeth and stared defiantly at them. It was what Papa had taken to calling her on their botanical outings. It was a compliment, and she would not have it be otherwise. It was the ghastly weather that had given her the muddy petticoats. You grow in the mud just like ferns, declared Florence, the ringleader. Fanny was out of her depth. She did not understand what made her so offensive to the other girls. She attempted to think of a retort, but all she could muster was, Florence, your name means flower. It's a botanical name from nature. This incident would replay itself with different variations, led by Florence and her band of lacy ribboned friends. She was almost accustomed to it, but sometimes wished she were a boy so that she wouldn't get teased for her scientific nature, as Papa defended in conversations with Mama that were increasing in their frequency. By good fortune, Mrs. O'Brien was walking briskly down the lane to her shop with a basket full of kitchen medicinals. Hello, young ladies. What are we doing here? She gave Florence a focused stare. Florence, did I not hear your mother calling for you? Better be running on now. The girl scurried off as Florence called behind her. Good day, Fernie. Mrs. O'Brien looked down at Fanny and smiled. Well, now, is that what you're calling yourself these days? Fanny looked down at the ground in shame and did not answer. She could not think what to say, so she said nothing. This was often the case when interacting with others not in her family or in the genus of teridophytes. She thought, I should look pensive and think of something clever to say, but that was as far as she got. Mrs. O'Brien did not wait for a reply, as she was wont to do on many an occasion. She stared down at the young girl, who was deep in thought. I reckon that is an apt name for you, more so than Fanny. I like it, she declared. Would you vi mind very much if I join your friends and call you Fernie? They are not my friends, declared Fanny, as she trembled with indignation and tried her very best not to cry. She had never said this before, not to Mama and not even to Nurse when she had asked one night what troubled Fanny so that she would weep. Mrs. O'Brien said in a soft voice, I know they're not your friends, lovey. They would not treat you so if they were. That Florence is much like her mother was at her age. She patted Fanny on the shoulder. Come on now, let us go to the shop and I'll make you a cup of tea. As Mrs. O'Brien busied herself stoking the wood in the stove to boil the kettle, Fanny sat quietly in reflective thought, watching her from the serving table. When she was with Papa, their conversations were botanical in subject, about specimens and correct collecting and labeling. This was a world she understood in which she felt safe. Anything unscientific was not a topic of conversation to have with Papa, as she had grown older, Mama cared even more for manners and cleanliness and said that Fanny should be more concerned with her appearance now. But, and she did not approve of her scurrying about the countryside. Mrs. O'Brien had always treated her with kind regard, and she was grateful for this respite. The shop cat went to Mrs. O'Brien and meowed as she was putting the milk in the tea. Well now, Mr. Mouser, and she poured a bit of milk in a dish for him. He always knows when it's tea time. She brought the tea tray to the table and said, Pour yourself a cup and I'll get the biscuits. Fanny felt very grown up being allowed to touch the teapot. 
Mama did not trust her to do so with her delicate porcelain tea set from China. She carefully poured the tea into a cup and asked if Mrs. O'Brien would like her to pour for her. Thank you, lovey, as she sat down with some biscuits on a plate. She said, you know, you remind me of my own niece about your age. Fanny sat up. No one was like her. Do I? Dip, dip, went the biscuit into her tea. Yes, Fernie girl, you do. Her name is Flora, and that's her God-given name by my brother and his wife. May she rest in peace. Mrs. O'Brien crossed herself. He followed his fortune to the other side of the world and is in New Zealand. That is as wild a place as ever, though I've not been there myself. Fanny dip-dipped her biscuit into her tea. Mama scolded her when she did that and told her it was uncouth. This was another thing she could appreciate about Mrs. O'Brien. She was not nervous around her, and Mrs. O'Brien did not admonish her to stop fidgeting. Fanny did not worry that she was doing every little thing improperly. How are we alike? she asked before taking a bite. Well, the ferns, of course. Flora, even though she's named for flowers, as she told me when she was just a wee one, she's a fern collector such as yourself. She got up and went to her writing desk and pulled out a bundle of letters. I'll give you these to read in your leisure, handing the packet to Fanny. Golly, Mrs. O'Brien, as she glanced through, there were specimens and ferns with which she was unfamiliar. Just then the shop bell rang as Cook came in. Well, Miss Fanny, I didn't expect to see you here, lass. She looked over at Mrs. O'Brien with a raised eyebrow. Your mother was calling for you, and I said I thought you were with your father. If you hurry, you'll just catch up with him by the stiles. Fanny jumped up, clasping the letters in her hand. Thank you ever so much, Mrs. O'Brien, and turned to run out. Then she remembered and turned around and curtsied. Mrs. O'Brien smiled and said, Oh, go on now, Fernie girl. No need for any fancy curtsying on my account. The door clanged shut with the jingle of the bell. Cook said, Fernie girl? Mrs. O'Brien walked over to the stove to make more tea. End of chapter two.